With me today is Kathy Liu from Broadcom. Welcome here. Thank you. So tell me what you do at Broadcom. Uh, I'm a distinguished engineer in Broadcom, and I has has up the 30s high-speed I/O uh, architecture and modeling team within Broadcom. And before Broadcom, I was uh, joined a startup company uh, design um, hard disk drive for read channel, and then is the the startup company acquired by LSI Logic, and then moved to the high-speed transceiver industry design within the LSI Logic, and then later LSI Logic acquired by Avago. Wow. And then um, Avago acquired Broadcom. So in the last <laughs> so 20 back years. So you're full circle. Yes, a full circle. And I haven't um, you know, changed my uh, job, but my company name keeps changing last 20 years. This is the industry's uh, uh, no, right so now. tell me more about high-speed I/O. What you're doing there? So uh, with the current like uh, 5G or the AI, put a lot of high um, requirement or demanding on the data center high-speed connectivities and then um, bandwidth requirement. So that means it's from chip to chip or from a chassis to chassis, from a building to building. You need a very high-speed uh, connectivity. And then is so uh, on the each chip at I/O, and you need to transmit and receive the the signal higher and higher speed. And then the channel is become noisy and longer, and you have to recover those uh, uh, transmitted data. And this is all is uh, I/O designer need to uh, do is uh, transmit and recover the data with a higher and higher speed. And, and at I/O at the chip level, can it keep up yet today with things like 5G and AI? Uh, yes, and I was in the high-speed I/O industry working on that for almost 20 years, and then from 2000, that I/O speed is one gigabit per second, and then now it's already 100 gigabit per second in 2000. Gigabits? Yes, for the you know I/O speed, and per lane, so it's already uh, almost 18 years. You can double like. Um, Hundred times you can calculate is every two to three years you double the I/O speed. So we have to catch up this uh, requirement. So this is beyond the Intel projection. Yes. Of doubling speeds. Yes. Yeah. So where do you see it going over time? It's uh, you know uh, become more and more challenge and uh, poses the unique uh, you know challenge like um, SI you know uh, in signal integrity or the device uh, you know, uh, operating speed, and then also the power. We double the speed every two to three years, and then the performance need to keep up the same. For example, you will have to get error-free transmissions over certain uh, distance, like uh, one meters uh, you know, cable, two meters uh, cable, or chassis to chassis from top of the chassis to the bottom of the chassis. The distance, you know, we transmit the data have to be the same, but the speed is double. And then the power, and then the chip designer have to meet the power um, assumption. You cannot double the power to get uh, 2x uh, speed, right? You have to keep the same power, but double the speed. So that is a very challenge. And they need a lot of innovations, technologies, and new technologies um, uh, put into the Generations and generations. So, is this specific to Broadcom? Like, you are, when you you create something in Broadcom, is it shared with the industry, or do you use it just at Broadcom? I think it's uh, both. And then, of course, we have to make uh, Broadcom as the leadership in the industry, and then uh, have uh, selling our product to many customers, and then maintain our the leader number one's uh, uh, position, but also as um, ecosystem. You can not only you know hide your technology within your company. You need others to correct, uh, to work together with you. Like for example, the connector company component, and then test equipment, and also some uh, like uh, uh, our system, you know, uh, equipment vendors, our customer, and then we have to work together to get the full system solution. We are only the chip designer, right? So, but overall, the chassis and then the server and the data center, those things is uh, come out with every segment of the industry, uh, putting together collaborations, make it work. So, so talk more about DesignCom. This is not your first one. Mm -hmm. How many have you been to? 
I cannot count. I think it's my first uh, year to attend Design Con is 2003 or two, and then I was a you know entry level engineer when I was first attended Design Con. This could be a 15 or 16 years ago, right? I was admired the the great hitters on the stage, and and then I was uh, you know thinking um, I want to be one of them, you know, knowledgeable and experienced engineer. And if this design kind of very good opportunities to provide like uh, uh, young engineers like me by that time, and I have a good opportunities to attend the panels and the uh, paper sessions and and the tutorials, and I have opportunity to learn. Now it's so many years uh, later. Now I become oh, active you're on stage. speaker. Yes, I'm on the stage, and I'm also happy to have opportunities to give back my knowledge and also help other. Uh, younger uh, engineer to grow. So what are you expecting at this design con? I think this expecting, uh, this year's, I was expecting new technologies like uh, design con in the past, more focused on the electrical you know, interface. And then maybe it's another like other conference more focused on the optical. But now when the data center uh, speed connectivity is getting faster, and then the bandwidth requirements are higher. We may have to consider uh, hybrid or uh, between the optical and electrical interface. And I think design con is uh, more and more getting uh, uh, SI um, and also PI, you know, knowledge and expertise. But also, I think is uh, need to talk about uh, co-packaging technologies, so something like. Um, the optical and the electrical working together. So, and then also it's like a speed is already the industry um, talk about what after 100 gigabit per second. Next one's 200 gigabit per second. I think this year I expect Design Con may have uh, some good uh, demo to show the solutions for 200 gigabit per second. Well, I hope you enjoy the show and thank you so much for coming. Thank I really you. appreciate it.